Hey fun fans, Nick Jr. here from Michigan again, and I am back for what will be our last technical update, unless there is a major change as we start to ramp up coming into this competition season. Just a final reminder that this is not an official ruling, and to consult FIRST and the FRC Q&A for any further questions in their necessary forms. Today we're going to be taking a look at Team Updates 11 and 12 that have been released from this past week, and take a look at three Q&A questions from the past seven days that we think are important for your team to know to ensure that your robot is legal. Cargo entering the field update, cable protector dimensions, frame size limits, and more of this coming up on this edition of FRC Updates Now. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Get ready to celebrate your Rapid React build season with Premiere Night on Saturday, February 26 at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. This year, no matter where you are in creating your robot, submit a 90 second or less video celebrating your build season to Premiere Night. This could be your completed robot, prototypes, testing, or anything you want to highlight about your team to the FRC community. Submissions are due by the end of Thursday, February 24th, and you can get more details on any fun social channel or at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash premiere 22. Getting started with team update 11 uh, in section 5.1 of the field. Uh, they just noted that there's actually 14 cargo rings uh, instead of 12. The cargo rings are the little rings that are actually on the field that are going to hold the cargo in place at the start of the match. So nothing too crazy. Um, just a quick note on changing that to ensure that uh, the manual is correct with what is actually going to be on the field. So again, those cargo rings are just the rings that actually hold the cargo um, so that way they're not rolling around to start the match that day. Um, similar to what they did in 2016 with O-rings under the piece of tape in the middle to make sure all of the boulders are in the right spot. It's kind of the similar uh, thing that we're seeing here as well. Um, section 6.7, uh, we're taking a look at uh, the um, note that says, uh, note that except via the terminal, robots may not deliberately cause opponent cargo to leave the field. Um, just making, you know, they're just adding the note of the opponent in there. Um, also important to note here that the um, floor segment of the cable protector is actually three quarters of an inch tall, not seven eighths. Um, but just to note that that's the, the cable protector that is on the field is three quarters and not seven eighths as it was previously before. Uh, section 8.3. Um, adds H312 that says uh, you no cargo shots after the match. Uh, after the end of the match, uh, when the timer displays zero, drive teams may not enter cargo into the field. So whether that be human player or any sort of that, um, the violation is a foul and any cargo scored as a result of this violation is negated. So important to note that as well. Um, section 9.5 motors and actuators R502 lists um, two things uh, that probably are directly related to the Falcon 500 um, issue that's been seen here. Um, that says, do not modify the motors. Um, the robot should not be modified in any way, except as follows. They added item J and K. Uh, repairs provided the performance specifications are unchanged. And then the maintenance recommended by the manufacturer. I think this has to do with um, pulling, or this has to do with pulling out the, the shaft screws of the Falcon and adding Loctite on them. This is legal. You're not modifying the motor. Um, and important to follow that. If you haven't seen that, please take a look at the previous update video that we did um, that we talked about the Falcon 500 issue a little bit. Uh, but please um, take a look at that if you haven't already and know that you are not um, in violation of the game manual by doing that. Uh, because again, if, if you don't do that, it's going to be uh, fatal to that motor. So important to take a look at that as well. Uh, section 11.2, referee interaction, they just added um, that it says tech fouls, that referees are not to self-track fouls and tech fouls. Um, so don't expect the referees to recall details about what fouls and tech fouls were made when they occurred and against whom. Taking a look at team update 12, uh, Dean's List Remote Interviews, uh, the... Hangzhou Regional, uh, forgive me if I butchered that name, but um, that regional has been added to uh, hosting uh, Dean's List Remote Interviews, so please make sure to take a look at that as well if you plan on attending that regional that you will be able to ensure that you're prepared and make sure you do that accordingly. Event rules have been updated for E101 just to add item F that says um, all team members must observe the following safety practices throughout the event. That includes healthy and safety requirements in place for that event, so mask wearing. Uh, so by the game manual, if the event says that you are required to wear a mask, you will be required to wear a mask. 
And taking a look at uh, the pressure switch requirements in 9.8, uh, Rev released a firmware version on the PH of 22.02 or newer controlling the compressor. So please make sure that before you attend competition, that you ensure that you are updated to this firmware version or your robot will not be legal and during the inspection they will require you to do that so if you wanted to get through inspection a little bit quicker make sure that this is done ahead of time section 12 looking at the glossary uh they just define what a cargo ring is as stated in team update 11 it's just uh one of the 14 small rings used to keep the cargo in place prior to the start of the match the rings are eighth inch thick, inch and three quarters in diameter, and they're just O-rings that are most likely going to go under a piece of tape. So that way they're secured to the field, but are used to hold cargo in place for that sense. Moving into the Q&A, uh, we're going to be taking a look at, again, the cable protector dimensions that they kind of mentioned in Team Update 11, asked by FRC 3419. Uh, and this just states that the the original statement stated that the floor segments are seven eighths inch tall, that it's secured to the carpet using hook and fastener, um, but the incorrect dimension was placed. So... Uh, they just said good catch. Please see Team Update 11 if that does not answer your question, and please rephrase and submit um, if there's any further questions upon that. Looking at question 111, um, and this is kind of backed off of what was posted in the last team update, uh, asked by FRC 2177. Uh, R502 would seem to apply this as not legal as it is not listed as an approved change. However, VEX has recently um, released a notice that the Falcon motors may be missing Loctite and a required spacer. Or that's actually a shim, uh, not a spacer. But in order uh, for teams to remedy this, the motor housing screws need to be removed. And in doing, the screws may become stripped and require replacing, either with identical screws provided by VEX or functionally equivalent screws if VEX is out of stock. Uh, and they just noted that, please see Team Update 11, that those two items have been added to um, the list of exceptions that you're allowed to do your motor. So again, by repairing your Falcon motors as recommended by VEX and CTR, uh, you are not in violation of the game manual in that sense. So again, if you have not already, I'll reiterate it once. If you've not already seen the Falcon update, it's all over Chief Delphi. Check out the fun um, technical update video that we posted last week. I really break down exactly how they... How they look at that um, revision sheet, as well as how to do it and why it's happening. So if you haven't already, make sure to take a look at that. I know we're getting close to competition season here, and the last thing you want to do is have a failed motor um, by something that could have been prevented that you can do now before you get to competition. So please, please, please take a look at that if you haven't already. And then question 116, phrase size limits. Uh, this is something that uh, I actually wasn't quite familiar with my teams haven't used the kit of parts chassis so i wasn't super familiar with this but frc 3110 um, asked we finished building our robot drive kit frame that was provided on kickoff day um, from the andy mark uh, kit of parts chassis and they just measured it and it was 126 inches the frame being 31 by 32. however they read the this year's game manual and says the perimeter cannot exceed 120 inches which is correct and they asked if this is an error uh, first, GDC responded by, in order to allow teams to configure the drive team in a variety of ways, the AM14U5 components provided in the kickoff kit do not assemble to a total frame size, which violates R104. Or do assemble, I'm sorry, do assemble to a total frame size, which violates R104, if no pieces are coupled for assembly. While there are many ways to configure the drivetrain legally, some recommended configurations from Andy Mark are shown on page 8 of the AM14U5 user guide. So. If you happen to be a rookie team or another team using the kit of parts chassis and did not cut your frame rails down, there is a high chance that you may be in violation of R104. So this is something I was not aware of. I just assumed that the kit of parts chassis came out of the box and was ready to go that you didn't have to cut any components, but it looks like you do. So if you haven't done that already, please make sure to measure your robot and make sure that your perimeter is within that 120 inches. So that is going to do it for this edition of FRC Updates Now. Just wanted to say a quick thanks to everyone who has been tuning into these technical videos over the past couple weeks. I hope that I have been able to help break down these updates uh, as I know that they can contain a ton of information and sometimes can be very confusing to digest. So uh, also just wanted to give a quick plug to the new edition of FRC Recap starting on February 28th, uh, which is this coming Monday. Uh, the fun crew, uh, especially Tyler and our FRC Recap host Steve, have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes and think that we have a really good product coming to you all. And I really look forward to be uh, sharing that with you guys as well. So, uh, so with that, I am Nick Jr. signing off of this edition of FRC Updates Now. Goodbye, everyone, and good luck this season.
Get ready to celebrate your Rapid React build season with Premiere Night on Saturday, February 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. This year, no matter where you are in creating your robot, submit a 90 second or less video celebrating your build season to Premiere Night. This could be your completed robot, prototypes, testing, or anything you want to highlight about your team to the FRC community. Submissions are due by the end of Thursday, February 24th, and you can get more details on any fun social channel or at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash premiere 22. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.